God, God and he, he's a uh, hope for a drug-free America. He, he oh, he yes. Started yes. In that thing with him, right? Uh, are your lights okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. We're rolling? Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, Jimmy Stewart, good morning, and thank you for making yourself available to us today here in Dallas on this day of your retrospective, as it were. Is this, uh, is this fun for you to look back over a career that spans so many years? Yes, it is. As a matter of fact, last night when I, uh, was a lot of people down, and uh, I forget where it was, but they, there was a whole room full of people, and they, they had questions. They, and th th this got me started with, and I started remembering things that I hadn't thought about for a long time. And I, I talked my head off for an hour, just just, uh, just remembering things, you know, just remembering things that happened, and things about Hitchcock and so on. All, uh, and I had a wonderful time. If my records are correct, your first movie was 1935 Murder Man, is that right? No, it was, it was Spencer Tracy. Uh, and how did you happen to get that role? Well, you see, it, it, in, the, in the studio days, things were a lot different than they are now. I like the studio days much better than the things go now. You, uh, I didn't happen to get the role. I was under contract. I was a, a, a con contract player at MGM. And you, uh, from the time I got here, you go to the studio every day at uh, 8 o'clock, and you leave at 6. And you go six days a week. And it isn't a question of how did I get the part. It was very simple. A man came up to me and said, here's a script. It's called Murder Man. You play the part of Shorty. And you go down to the wardrobe and see if you have the right clothes for the part. And we start Monday. Now, I'd never seen this. I'd never. That, that, that's, that's the way things happen. And you played a man called Shorty? Yes. As that, tall as you are? Well, that, uh, that uh, the casting director at MGM and I became quite good friends. A man named Billy Grady, who was around for a long time. He's not with us anymore. But he, he was a fine man. And he said, I, 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 think, uh, I think this part's going to be all right for you, but I'll take you up to the producer. He doesn't know that, that it's been cast. And uh, we went up to the producer, and Bill said, I th we're this James Stewart, he just uh, signed up with the company, and I thought he'd be good for the part of Shorty in uh, The Murder Man. And the producer looked at him and looked at me, and he said, you come up here and stand there and say you want this long string bean to play the part of Shorty in Murder Man. And uh, he said, well, I, I, I just thought you could change the name. And, oh, the producer said, now, now you want to change the script. And, and well, to uh, make a long story short, I, I got the part, but uh, they, kept, they, they kept the name, Shorty. <laughs> Had to put all the other actors on boxes, maybe. <laughs> yes, or I walk in a trench. <laughs> <laughs> If I may, Jimmy, I'd like to do uh, just a quick little retrospective. You know how we are in television. It all has to be done quickly. But I'll just uh, toss out some questions, and you just give me uh, the first answer that comes to your mind. Referring now to your films, which one was the most fun to make? Well, the most fun to make, and I think the favorite, is It's a Wonderful Life. Which one was the most physically difficult? Oh, well, it, all the westerns were a little tough, and uh, but this was good for you. You, you uh, it, this was fun. You were on location a lot of time. You do, were on the horse a lot of time, and uh, it, uh, it 
that physically it was uh, they, there was a lot of it, but that was a part of it, and uh, uh, you enjoyed it. The most difficult character. I suppose Mr. Smith was. Uh, I suppose that that uh, I would think so. Because of the long speeches, or not so much, but uh, I had to really. I had to, in my my own mind, I had to sort of, sort of stabilize the character and uh, just uh, know exactly why I was yelling around and doing all this thing. And, and uh, uh, Frank Capper was a tremendous help to me, but I still had to, ha had to, uh, sort of in my own mind, I so, sort of stabilized the thing, and this was kind of, hadn't been in the movies very long, and it was, uh, it was a little difficult. What comes to mind when I say Alfred Hitchcock? Uh, one of the finest directors, I think, one of the finest movie makers ever. He, uh, he had completely his own style of directing, he had uh, his own style. He was tremendous. Uh, he, he he came better prepared, I think, than anybody I, I'd ever seen. I, in the picture like Rear Window, he, he worked for six months on that script and had it so that there wasn't a question. I never saw him look at a script during the shooting of the picture. Never, uh, maybe, maybe the. Maybe the script girl would come over to him and say, uh, Mr. Hitchcock, the, the people didn't say what's here at all. They've changed it all around. He said it sounded fine. And, and he, was, he was very difficult for the script girl, but uh, uh, in a class by himself. The role that was least like you I don't know. I, I, uh, all the new, all the new sort of thing that uh, I could uh, at least like me. That that never was the point, you know. They 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 would they would pretty much try to get the get the roles. Not like Murder Man, but to get the roles that uh, I, I sort of buy. The ones I'd done before that I sort of uh, fit in. I, I, I really don't know. Of all the locations, did you have a favorite? I was thinking about that the other day. There's a place, Durango, Colorado, right up on the top of the mountains, the perfectly beautiful part of the country. And I made quite a few pictures up there, the westerns. Uh, it's, a, it's one of the, one of the few remaining narrow track railroads that, and what it, what it started, uh, Silverton was way down in the valley, and this is one of Years ago, it was one of the biggest silver mining areas in the country, and the, and the town of Silverton was quite large, and in, this was way back in the old days. But uh, there was so much going on, and so many people in the, uh, in the town. There was an opera house. Opera singers from New York came and performed. There was a wonderful theater, but all the fancy plays came. To, uh, this tiny little town, and it was very hard to get to until they put in this little narrow gauge railroad, which was very tough because it was just big mountains like that. Uh, but they kept it, they kept it uh, going over the years, the silver. Uh, I, I shot a picture down in the town of uh, Silver, because there's no more silver. They really, <laughs> they really cleaned the place out, but they kept the town as, as a sort of a tourist attraction. Which film do you consider your best work? 
So I, I, it's a wonderful light. It's always my favorite, uh, and uh, I will. Uh, I, I, I think the fav my favorite from all points of view. But a thing like Mr. Smith, I thought the, probably some of that was uh, uh, stuff that I remember. Jimmy, did you ever turn down a film that you later wished you had done? Yes. Yes, I did. It, it, it was right after Rear Window when I uh, had the wonderful, uh, wonderful good fortune of uh, being in the film with Grace Kelly. I, she, she was just, just absolutely wonderful. And this was her fifth film. And she was like a star that had been acting all her life and, and, and so beautiful and so, so easy and, and uh, 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 thoughtful. And uh, I finished the film and right away we got a film at MGM where Grace and I called Designing Woman. And I was, was was delighted. It was just a light comedy, but a very nice film. And we were about ready to start in, in about a week. And Grace came up to uh, L.B. Mayer, the head of the studio, and said, Mr. Mayer, I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to make this film. Uh, and that, she said, I'm, I'm getting married. And he said, well, Grace, says, that's wonderful. We'll have a big reception for you upstairs. And uh, this is just one. She said, no, Mr. Murray, I, I, you don't quite understand. So she went through the, uh, who she was marrying and everything. And so they came to me and they said, well, Grace, it, can't she uh, going to get married, but uh, we'll get somebody else. And I said, no, I don't. Uh, I don't. I, I wanted to do this with Grace, I, so I, I, I bowed out of it, which uh, was a dumb thing for me to do, because it was a nice picture, and they got Betty Bacall, who I, I enjoyed her for so, so, so many years. She's just uh, she's a wonderful actress and wonderful at comedy, and was just right for the part. And uh, she did it, and Greg Peck did my part, but I, I was. That, that was a foolish thing to do. I wish I'd, I wish I'd played the part. Of all the things in your life, Jimmy Stewart, what are you most proud of? Well, I, well I'm telling you, sort of goal. I'm proud of my fa my family. I'm proud of my the the. Uh, the fact that I I learned the value of hard work very early in my life, and I, being not a very good student, I was able to I was able to graduate from Princeton. Uh, it was touch and go there, but, but uh, that that uh, I. I I was very proud of proud of that. Uh, and looking back over the picture business, over the whole, whole idea of acting, uh, I had no idea I was going to act when I was in Princeton, but it was all I got it from Josh Logan. But I, uh, looking over the career and everything, I'm I'm, I'm proud that, that I. Uh, got started and picked acting as a career. Are you still called general by some people? Every once in a while I get it. You like that? Oh, yeah. Yes, fine. Remember, it's a, that was quite an honor. I, I was very honored to receive that. How many stars? Just one star, Brigadier. Brigadier General. What, uh, what do you predict for the Oscars this time? Best picture, for instance. Well, according to, I, I may be Rain Man, uh, and uh, maybe 
Dustin Hoffman. That, that's sort of the thing that's going around. Uh, I haven't seen all that. My wife and I haven't been very good moviegoers this year, but uh, this the, this seems sort of a uh, one of the top choices. How about best actress? That that looks like a real race to me. Yes, I'm I'm just not sure. I'm I'm not sure of that at all. Meryl Streep or Glenn well, Mar Close? Meryl Streep, I'd always vote for, but I uh, the, the, she has a little more competition this time than she uh, has had for a long time. But uh, I always vote for Meryl Streep. She's great. Jodie Foster, you think, has have a chance this year for? I, di I didn't see her. You haven't seen that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, Jimmy, is there, there anything else that, that you would like to have a chance to say? No, I just, uh, I just had a delightful time here in Dallas. I've always, always had a real affection for the state of Texas and Dallas and Fort Worth. And uh, I've been here so much as a part of a, a part of my movie career. Uh, they. Uh, they don't do it very much anymore, but we used to we used to go out when the picture was opening. We used to go out with it and sort of just uh, introduce the picture as as it uh, opened. And Texas was was the ideal. It, it became the sort of sort of the favorite place to open pictures. And. Uh, Bob O'Donnell had a wonderful string of theaters and was so great at the job. And he, we, uh, oh, I, dozens of times I remember being here and going out on, on, uh, on, on tour with the, and Texas, it, it became sort of a thing in, in Hollywood with all the studios. There was this feeling that it, if the picture did pretty well in Texas, you were in pretty good shape, and it would do well uh, in other parts of the country and the world. Well, thank you so much, Jimmy Stewart. We promised we wouldn't keep you too long. So thank you very much, and congratulations on this honor you're receiving here today. Thank you, and I enjoyed talking to you very much. Thank you. That wonderful capability, you would just say, uh, gosh, what a but well, they in all sort of all sections of show business. It's just he he knew his way around. And it was a like I, I looked forward to seeing him every time. And uh, he had everything sort of planned, so well planned for the world. You know, we go to Houston, we go I remember Frank Kaplan I, this was after the war. We uh, ran into a hailstorm and uh, had to come back here and waited. And so when we got there, the parade was all over. But uh, I wasn't able to uh, hear the tower and hear uh -huh. the, the uh, controllers of it. And they, and they just, uh, uh, I was unable to pass and I, unable to get my license renewed. Yeah.